Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today, let's make a couple more colander spirals. The shirts were prepped like normal and I have them turned inside out. For one of the shirts, I'm gonna use a regular colander. This one I purchased at Walmart for, I think it was 97 cents. By the way, this shirt is an adult size large. I have the colander turned upside down and I'm placing the center of the colander where I want the center of my spiral to be. Then I'm gonna use a pair of locking tweezers and start the spiral. Once I have the center portion of the shirt spiraled, I'm not gonna hold the folds in place with anything like rubber bands or kite string. I'm just gonna leave it alone. From here, I need to put the shirt inside of something so that I can apply the dye. So I'm using a long container and I'm using a dish pan, which is the white pan, that I've placed a plastic bowl on top of. And the bowl is turned upside down so that the colander will sit on top of the bowl. This setup is tall enough to keep this shirt out of the muck. So there's not gonna be any large areas of the shirt hanging down. If any of the areas of the shirt, like the sleeves, are falling down into the main container, I can place them up on the edges of the white dish pan. By the way, the white dish pan and the green bowl that you see are both items that I purchased from the dollar store. I purchase a lot of useful tie-dye supplies at the dollar store. I'm gonna make a second shirt at the same time, but this time I'm gonna use a bowl that I purchased from Walmart and drilled holes in the bottom of it. This shirt is an extra large and this time I placed a mark using a washable marker where I'd like for the center of the spiral to be. Then I'm gonna place the bowl underneath that mark and spiral the shirt again using my locking tweezers. I'm gonna use the same setup to keep the shirt out of the muck or out of the bottom of the container. But if you notice, the minute I try to move this bowl and put it on top of the other bowl, the shirt comes totally unspiraled. This bowl that I'm using instead of the colander has got a texture to it and this shirt doesn't seem to be sticking quite as well as it does to the colander. So I'm gonna go ahead and re-spiral the shirt. I'm glad that I made a mark where I want the center of the spiral to be, because it's really easy to just go ahead and re-spiral the shirt now. I also left my locking tweezers attached to the shirt, so I can just begin spiraling from here. I need to make an ice barrier to keep the ice on top of the folds. And at the dollar store, they have thin plastic cutting boards which I've cut into strips. I'm using some wooden clothespins to hold two strips together. I'm gonna to place an ice barrier on the very top of each one of these spirals. The first shirt that I'm gonna apply the dye to is the size large shirt made using the colander. I'm starting by adding a line of amethyst from Dharma Trading Company. I'm taking the line of amethyst into the center of the spiral. The next color I'm adding is Tropical Dream from Dharma. I'm not adding dye all the way down the sides of the shirt. I'm only putting it in the center portion of the spiral. And I don't want to add a whole bunch of dye. That's kind of the thing about this method is you want to allow the dye to move. That's what gives the cool effect on the shirt. Then the last color I'm gonna add is Royal Purple from Dye Spin. You will notice that some of the dye does fall down to the sides of the shirt, and that's perfectly fine. It's gonna add to the design. 
I'm going to add just a little bit of dry soda ash over the top of the dye that I applied. And then I'm going to place the ice inside of this ice barrier. I've found that placing the ice around the edge of the ice barrier tends to work the best for me. I place the ice around the edge and then gradually build up into the center of the ice barrier. I'm adding a pretty thick layer of ice because I want the dye to move quite a bit down the shirt and I'm not going to come back and add a second layer of ice. This is going to be the only layer of ice that I'm going to add to each of the shirts. Now I'm going to apply the dye to the extra large shirt that was made by using the bowl that I drilled holes in. All the colors that I'm using for this shirt are Pro Chemical and dye colors. I'm using Balsam Fur, followed by Sage, Khaki, and Evergreen. I'm going to apply the dye the soda ash, and the ice the same way I did on the other shirt. Okay, so here's what the shirts look like right after I applied the ice and I set them aside to allow the ice to melt. After the ice melted, this is what they looked like. And I left them alone for at least 24 hours after the ice melted. To rinse the shirts, I took them to my utility sink and I began rinsing them in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. Then I warmed the water up to hot and continued rinsing to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. When the water was running almost clear, I put the shirts along with some Dharma's textile detergent into my washing machine and washed them using a hot water cycle. And after the shirts were washed and dried, this is what they look like. Okay, so here is the size large shirt that was the colander spiral. And I think it looks really pretty. I like the design and I like the shirt. But the tropical dream didn't show up really dark on the shirt. It's a lot darker on the back, but that's the side of the shirt that I actually put the dye on. Part of the reason why the tropical dream didn't show up quite as dark as I wanted it to is because my tie-dye space cooled off a little bit. The day that I did these shirts, the weather was kind of fluctuating back and forth between being cold and hot and cold and hot. And I didn't pay enough attention and allowed my tie dye space to drop below 70 degrees. For the Procyon fiber reactive dyes to be as bright and vibrant as possible, they need to be processed in an area where the temperature is above 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And mine was hovering just a little bit below 70 degrees. Certain colors like turquoise or any color that contains turquoise needs to be at a little bit higher temperature. To get turquoise bright and vibrant, it really needs a temperature above 70 degrees. Tropical Dream isn't necessarily turquoise, but you can tell by looking at it, it contains quite a bit of turquoise. I do like the cool green color though that split out of the Tropical Dream. By the way, Tropical Dream was one of the seasonal colors that was only offered for a limited amount of time. It's also a little bit hard to tell on this photo, but as the dye ran down the sides of the shirt, it caused a slight blue cast to the entire shirt. 
So the white areas don't totally look white because they did get just enough of the blue dye on them that they were dyed a very light blue. So here's the size extra large shirt that was made using the bowl that I drilled the holes done in. And I was a little curious whether or not it would change the look of the shirt. And I don't really think that it does. I like this shirt too. I think all the colors look really pretty. I think they probably would have been a little bit darker too if the room were a little bit warmer. I like the way the dye is moving in this shirt though. And this shirt has a larger white area on it than the other one did. Here are both of the shirts side by side. And when you put them side by side like this, you can see kind of the tinge of blue to the size large shirt. But when you look at the very center at the way the spirals are formed, there's not a huge difference between the definition in each of the spirals based upon using the colander or just the regular bowl that had the holes drilled in it. I also don't see a whole lot of difference in the dye movement. I was curious whether or not the colander would work better since it had holes in the side of it versus just the bowl where I only put the holes in the bottom. But here again, I don't notice a huge difference either, so I don't really think it matters. I think you can use whichever one you have available. But overall, I really like both of these shirts. I think this is such a fun technique. The dye just kind of moves the way it wants to, and each shirt turns out so unique and different. And I think it is a lot of fun to experiment with this technique. So if you all have enjoyed this video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.